Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rahim Eskalai, and this is 413 Sports Talk. Sitting with me is a man with one heck of a resume. He's a health teacher, a varsity coach, and he's the assistant track and field coach at East Long Meadow High School. Uh, coach of the Spartans, Brendan Abad. Welcome to the show, Brendan. Awesome. You've, you coach a lot of different teams over at ELHS. When did you first fall in love with sports? So I started, you know, playing sports at a young age, like, like everyone else. Um, I think my parents got me involved with sports to socialize, to obviously get that good physical activity in. Right. Uh, but overall, just meeting friends, you know, and I think um, what drove me to sports and what drove me to, to loving sports is just all my friends did it, you know. And I think as a kid, we all want to fit in to a certain group of people. Uh, we all want to fit into um, – I don't know, kind of what everyone else is doing, you know, fit into the crowd. So I think sports for me was just to kind of meet new people, to uh, continue to develop and build those relationships I have with my classmates uh, at the younger level, and just to get that good physical activity in. Uh, sports is a great way to, you know, really see a lot of health benefits, um, cardiovascular fitness, muscular fitness, all that stuff. You know, it, it's it's a great way to to really start living a life full of, of health, I call it, and uh, right. I think at a young age, sports really, really does all that stuff. Um, and, and I've loved it ever since then. Um, I think as I've gotten older, the, the team aspect of sports has changed a lot. I think we're, when you're a kid, all you see is, you know, the, uh, the little Brian James is on TV, all these super shows on TV, not yeah. saying not team, not saying they're not team guys, but you know, we want to be like them. But I think if I could do it again, the thing I would have liked to do more is be more of a team guy, not just try to be, you know, the guy. Um, ah, okay, you know, okay. Yeah, and I think I think as a coach now, and as a you know player in college, I saw that a lot more than I did when I was younger. Um, we all want to be on TV one day, be famous, and, and be that athlete that we all look up to. But then a day, I think if you're like a great team player, that's all you can really really do. And if you happen to be a great player as well, that, that's just you get you check both boxes, you know. So, right, right, right. Exactly. It's good to have the dreams and the aspirations and to keep them alive, but also to be realistic at the same time. Yeah, and I think using sports as a vehicle, you know, um, whether that vehicle gets you to, you know, a college, whether that vehicle gets you to a different level. I mean, we all know the numbers. There's very, very low chances of going professional in sports. You know, even getting a scholarship for college is slow. Uh, but, you know, using the sport and not really letting it use you. Um, and I think having that realistic mindset where, like, you know, you put everything in there, but you also have a backup plan as to, you know, what's going to happen if it just doesn't work out or um, – what am I really using sports for? I think if you ask that question, sure. people would be in other shape uh, with that. So, um, but sports has been great. It's been a big part of my life since I was a kid. Uh, I, I joke with my friends a lot. I say that I, I get paid to play sports with kids all day, you know, and I do. I, I mean, I love it. I have a great job. Um, I get to teach kids sports. I get to see them grow as people, uh, but also players at the same time. And I think that's something you can't really, really ask for, uh, clearly not ask for in a job. So I, I love it. I'm living my dream life. So it's it's been great. It's been awesome. That that that's awesome. Um, when did you start playing basketball, and um, what what position did you did you play? Yeah, so I started playing basketball probably in um, first or second grade, just playing kind of town basketball, and then um, that developed into more travel basketball, AU basketball. It got more competitive as I got older. Um, I was I was a guard in elementary school, and then. I started, to grow, I started to grow a little bit, grew a little bit. And I think my coaches tried to put me at like the, 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 the four position, the four or five position. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I, like, <laughs> I like playing guard. I have these guard skills. Like, why am I getting penalized for growing? And, uh, you know, I still want to play a guard. So I think in the middle school, I was like a combo guard, a forward guard. And then in high school, I was like a point guard, more of like a two, three guard. Right. Uh, and then in college, I was primarily a two guard. Um, but – I mean, the beauty of basketball is all five positions of the court are so strong and so important, and you need everyone to coexist in order for the for the team to work and really to function at a high level. And um, I try to tell that to my team all the time. Like, listen, just because you're a starter or not a starter, just because you're playing a five or the four or the three or the right. two or the one, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, you're playing a team sport where everyone needs you to do something, whether that's to set a screen, whether that's to knock down a shot, whether that's to, you know, grab a big rebound, like – you all contribute to a, a team. And I think being a part of a team is one of the things that in my life, it's one of the most powerful things I've ever done is be part of a team, you know, playing something bigger than yourself is something that I think everyone should have an opportunity to do. 
uh, especially the youth level. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I can't speak enough about what the importance of a team really means. Uh, it means a lot to me. And I try to instill those values in, in my program here. Even in classroom, even in my classroom, I try to instill, you know, a team environment. Um, cause teams can do a lot more than an individual person, as you know. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. It's been a long there, journey, long journey. Yes. There, there is, um, we'll, we'll go with the cliche statement here. There is no, uh, no I in team. Yeah. Um, and I, I like that, that you said that you're, you're teaching the youth that because, um, as you alluded to, you know, you could, you could easily get caught up in, um, you know, uh, oh, I just dropped 27. I'm the guy. You know what I mean? I, I went four from four behind the three, behind the arc. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think it's, I, I, I want to commend you. And I think it's really important to preach that, especially with the young student athletes, you know, mm -hmm. seeing the LeBrons, uh, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, yeah. you know, those, those guys of the, uh, of the basketball world. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of going off what you, you know, you said there is, is I think that, um, the more like team is preached, and emphasize with a group, uh, the more that team is going to, you know, really buy in. Cause I feel like, you know, with me, I try to balance like in practice, especially like doing something, but also emphasizing something enough. Um, so for example, you know, taking a charge in basketball, that, that's a huge play. It's a momentum changing play. Uh, oh, yeah. it's a fine line between drilling it and emphasizing it because it's tough nowadays to drill charges, you know, because kids get knock their head on the ground and get concussion, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But so we implemented some this year where, we called it a charge card. So if you take a charge in a game, you got a charge card. And what that card was used for was instead of um, running a sprint like we do in our practice, you could put your charge card down and you didn't have to run a sprint. So that was kind of a way where we balanced like emphasizing it, but also drilling it, even though we didn't drill it, you know? So All right. same goes with team. Like we talk about team a lot. Like if you talk about something enough, like the guys or girls or whoever you're coaching will buy into the system, you know? Uh, that's something we do a lot here. Most definitely. If, if you, if, if you plant it, if you plant it, it will grow. They yes. will come, they will, they will buy in. Yes, sir. Um, do you remember the exact point in your sports journey? And um, when I say sports journey, I mean, you know, it could have been anywhere from uh, middle school um, to, you know, your time at uh, Springfield college. Um, was there, was there, um, a, a point in that journey when you decided, you know, I think coaching is going to be my thing. Yeah. So after high school, uh, I went to Holyoke Community College for two years and mm -hmm. it was the best decision of my life. I really recommend people going there. If you have, if you don't really know what you want to do yet and you want to save a lot of money, I suggest going to community college. I think it's such a smart idea. Uh, mm -hmm. And I tell my students that a lot, like, listen, if you don't know what you want to do, if you want to save some money, um, go to community college to start off. And it's a really great, avenue to go so oh, yeah. when i was at community college i volunteered coached uh at our, our local rec center and i coached a fifth and sixth grade travel uh girls team a seventh and eighth grade travel boys team and then an eighth grade travel boys team so i did a lot of coaching a lot uh, of work. <laughs> yeah it was, it was busy but it got me to where i am now and that experience i had really made me realize wow i love working with young athletes i, young, I love working with, with people uh i love you know, kind of teaching people what, what life has to offer and how to really, you know, bounce back from adversities because life, as you know, is full of adversity. Like you have to be able to bounce back and kind of keep, keep fighting, keep pushing forward. Um, so that experience, me coaching all those teams my first year at community college uh, catapulted me to wanting to pursue a major in physical and health education for college. And it wanted me to pursue coaching, especially, you know, high school coaching. So if it wasn't for those three teams, I don't know where I'd be today. Uh, so I always credit a lot of where I am now to those three teams. Um, it was hard work, but I love developing relationships. That was like the best part of my job was developing relationships, getting to know the kids um, and getting to know their likes, dislikes, kind of what makes them tick, what makes them go. And also watching a team come together at the beginning uh, and gel and hit their stride and do really, really good things. Um, so that was my journey. And I thought I kind of got involved with coaching and teaching and I absolutely love it. I want to trade for the world. Um, I have the best job in the world, even though, you know, the money is not the best, but, um, <laughs> we're being honest, but, um, I, I love my job. I couldn't ask for anything else in my life. Um, I love working with kids, love working with young athletes. Um, and 
I love watching them grow as people and as athletes. It's, it's the best feeling in the world. Right. Yeah, man. You, you, you've done a great job with that. Um, specifically, um, I, I spoke to um, one of your teammates, uh, Connor uh, Robidoux. And um, just in, in the, the way he plays and the way he approaches sports definitely uh, uh, speaks, to, speaks to the level of coaching. And I want to commend you on that as well. Um, I, 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 I noticed that in the way he carries himself um, on, on the little bit of film I was able to see on him. So yeah, that, that is, that is, that is awesome. It's yeah. gotta be, gotta be one of the, um, one thing that I, that I, that I like about it is that, you know, from, you know, a lot of people don't see from a fan's perspective, they just mm -hmm. see the, the, the record, the championships, they don't get a chance to, to um, experience, experience the children and um uh not experienced the journey you know what i mean yeah. um, and so so i think that was uh i was really great that you brought that up yeah and connor kind of going up connor he's, he's one of the most you know remarkable athletes we've had um mm -hmm. he works his, his butt off he has he's an unbelievable student he's a yes coach guy whatever you tell him to do he just says yes coach and does it and he's someone who a coach dreams about you know right. um is he gonna play professional sports one day I don't think so, but he's going to do a lot of really good things in his life because of the way he was raised, uh, the values he has, uh, the way he lives his life. He's, he's a remarkable kid, and we, I couldn't be you know, luckier to have him. His teachers love him to death. He's a great kid. He's got great, great grades, and uh, he's an unbelievable teammate. You know, One of the most team-first guys you'll ever meet in your life. Um, he's, he's someone who emphasizes what we want in, in an athlete. So I'm happy he came on your show. He's a great kid. Most definitely, man. And again, um, I, uh, I, I thank you. It's, it's, it's a collective thing when, um, when we're talking about, about guys like that, you know, I, I thank, I, I thank you for everything you've taught him. Um, you know, it se seems like he's got a, he had a great upbringing, mm. um, great family home life. So that's, that's awesome. When, when something like that can come together for the student athlete and who better than to, to, to connect it all then the uh, the coaches and the teachers at school and mm -hmm. so I, I think that's that's really great yep. um are you inspired by any current or um, retired coaches and you know we know that you you you're in charge of uh, of, of many different sports so mm -hmm. it can be from any any background any yeah so so growing up um, I don't know if you're gonna like us or not but I'm a big Duke fan um, mm -hmm. I love I, I still love coach K uh -huh. but I, I, I like adored him when I was a kid uh, I remember one time in, I think it was in sixth or seventh grade, and yeah. I, uh, I wanted to go to the Duke game at Boston College. And uh, I thought I was going to get tickets for Christmas. I didn't end up getting tickets. And uh, it, it was really heartbreaking at the, at the moment. It was heartbreaking. But um, yeah. I did end up seeing Coach K. I, I've seen him coach a couple times in person. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he, to me, like he, he embodies a lot of the values we want in coaches. Um, the game changes a lot, whether that's track, cross country, baseball, football, basketball, whatever. The game changes a lot. Right. But values a coach has doesn't change. You know, working hard, accountability, um, trust, uh, collaboration, those values don't change. Uh, and offense could change, right? Going five out versus going uh, more like high, low, three round two, that can change. Right. But the values a coach instilled in someone, those don't change no matter how, how long it goes. You know, those, those, those really do last a test of time. Um, but I, I love, I love Bill Self. I, you know, even Roy Williams, he retired UNC coach. I loved him, even though I'm a Duke fan. Yeah. Um, I love Kara Lawson, the Duke women's coach. I think she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many great coaches out there. Um, high school coaches and college coaches and pro coaches. Like I just try to take a lot and, and learn from all the coaches that, that have done a lot of good things. Uh, even take things from the coaches who haven't, you know, quote unquote, like you said, won a lot of games. Doesn't mean they're not good coaches. Uh, in my mind, a good coach doesn't, you know, it's not about winning and losing. It's about the people you impact, the people you help develop. Um, and that goes a long way. And if I could do half the things uh, some of these great high school coaches, even in Western Mass have done, you know, Mike Labrie retired a couple of years ago. Yep. The stories I've heard about Mike Labrie is, is remarkable. I hope I can do half the things he's done. Um, I've met him. Yeah, he's a legendary coach. I've met him a couple of times, but he's just impacted so many lives. Um, and there's so many coaches in Western Mass and around the country that I, I look up to and I aspire to, to, to coach and be like, even coaches I coach against right now, I look at them like, holy crap, I'm coaching against that guy. Like I used to look up to that guy when I was a kid, you know? So it's, it's, it's funny how it all works out, but um, I really emphasize myself on just lifelong learning, continue to learn from people. 
Um, Tom Izzo said one time, the Michigan State coach, that uh, you have to go into a room and act like you know nothing because you want to absorb all the knowledge you can get. And that's what I try to do, you know, whether it's from a kid or whether it's from someone who's been coaching for 40 years. I want to learn uh, about them and, and the business and, and teaching and how to best impact kids. Because at the end of the day, that's all we're here to do is impact kids and, and be a positive influence in their life. So that's that that that's awesome, man. Um, from your playing days at Longmeadow High to Holyoke Community College to your time um, playing and learning at um, Springfield College, how has how has these how have these experiences um, impacted your decision to coach? Yeah, so I think the best teacher in life, Zeke, as you can probably you know know point out to is experience right like you have different okay. experiences in life and and you learn from, through different experiences um you know one thing i love about coaching sports is you, you learn of the sport right you learn the, the strategies that you learn the, te the techniques you learn the skills right. but you also learn a lot through sports adversity uh learning how to be a great teammate um learning how to you know uh commitment all that stuff work ethic those are all great qualities that you need to learn in life that are going to help you through your next step in life and uh, in, you know, middle school, high school, I had great coaches. I wasn't the easiest person to coach because I was just one of those people who just cared about themselves really and wanted to, you know, be on TV and, and want to do all this stuff. But as I got to college, I really realized like, oh my gosh, like being part of a team is so much bigger than yourself. And my college coach, uh, Coach Charlie Brock, really helped me understand that and really demonstrate that to the fullest. Um, me and him are really close to this day. And I was at his house a couple weeks ago for dinner and, and we just... We talk all the time about coaching and, and what a coach can do in someone's life. And I've had a ton of great coaches in my life, um, you know, but Coach Brock has been the, the one coach who's really kind of helped guide me in the right direction and, and has taught me so many life lessons that I'm going to remember forever. And I hope to instill the life lessons that he's taught me and all my coaches have taught me to my students and student athletes. And hopefully that tree keeps growing, you know. Right. One person tells someone, it's kind of like that snowball effect, you know. They, you tell someone these great qualities – they pass it on to their kids, their, the kids they coach. So hopefully it just keeps on going, you know? Exactly. The, um, the, the good thing about youth, uh, about the youth is that they're, they're sponges. So um, yes. just bouncing, bouncing off of, off of what you said, there's maybe if you got a group of 50, maybe two guys get it. Maybe two guys will, will, will go on and, and, and yeah. something. And that's better than nothing. Exactly. Exactly. But I think if, if you're there for everyone, you know, a great quote I heard one time, I saw it on a, a I think it was a, college basketball TV show, someone said that the kids aren't there for you. You're there for the kids, right. you know, like you're there for the kids, no matter what they go through, good or bad, like you're there for the kids and your job is to help them learn through that experience. Like you talked about Zeke, you know, they don't learn through that experience. They're kids. Kids are going to make mistakes. That That's part of life. Um, if you can negate those mistakes and help them see kind of why they made those mistakes and how you can kind of change that action the next time, I think you, you did, you've done your job as a coach and a teacher. Um, and that stuff's so powerful. Like that stuff, engineers, business people, great jobs. I love that stuff. That's important mm -hmm. stuff. But teaching, coaching, influencing the youth, mentoring, like that's stuff that really makes an impact. And that's a meaningful life in my mind. I'm yeah. not saying those, those jobs aren't meaningful. But once again, it goes back to kind of like I can't imagine me doing anything else. So, you know, I just I love my job. Oh, you're, 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 you're very passionate and passionate about a good thing, sports, something, yeah. something, something we all, um, regardless of our backgrounds, where we come from, what religion we follow. Um, one thing I love about sports is that that's somewhere where we can collectively all, all totally come agree. together for one goal. Yes, totally um, agree. Um, in your opinion, how does sports teach students about life and how is it, how is this important to your school's culture? So uh, you hit it perfectly, right? Like sports are supposed to teach kids about life. Like if I'm coaching for wins, if I'm coaching to get the next LeBron James or, you know, do that type of stuff, I'm going to live a pretty shallow life. Like right. <laughs> that, stuff never, that stuff never happens. Um, right. You know, my job is win or loss to be there for these kids, to help them grow to teach them life lessons that they're going to take on and, and, and have for the rest of their life. Adversity, right? Learning how to cope with losses, learning how to fight through no matter what happens. Like those are life lessons that people need all the time because life is hard. And, and as you know, especially these, these last 15 months, life's really challenging and really hard. And, you know, there's been loss. There's been so much change in this country. Um, and we have to 
you know, have that mentality of we're going to do this together no matter what, and we're going to move forward no matter what. Right. And I think those life lessons are so important to instill in the youth. Um, and it's something that I look forward to every day. I love waking up in the morning. Uh, I love coming to school. I love talking. You know, my favorite part of school is coming in and having those small conversations with the people who may need them the most and you have no idea about. You know, some of these kids, they come in a lot of, you know, baggage. They come in a lot of things going on at home. And if you can be there for them to, to brighten up their day, that might be the only one good part of their day. And the fact that I have the opportunity to do that, like that, that humbles me so much. And that makes me just, you know, once again, be passionate about my job and give it all, uh, give it all in because that's, that's all it's about is just kind of giving back to the community, giving back to the youth and, and making a positive impact on, on kids. Cause I've had so many positive impacts in my life. Right. Worth that's, that's, that right there is, is, is worth more than any award. I yeah. Mean, hands, hands down, dude. That's, mm -hmm. that is, that is awesome. Um, track and field is highly celebrated in this area. Mm -hmm. You hear less about cross country. Can you explain to us the major differences between track field and cross country and why you decided to coach both? Yeah. So, uh, this is kind of a, going back to my journey here. So, mm -hmm. uh, I coached, well, let's go before that. So, my first year coaching at East Long Meadow, being involved in East Long Meadow as all, was uh, my high school basketball coach, uh, Tim Allen, who's a principal at the middle school in East Long Meadow. Uh, he was out of coaching for a little while because he was a principal, really, you know, really busy and stuff. And he called me one day out there. I was done playing in college. And he called me and said, hey, I just got the job at East Long Meadow. Uh, you want to help me coach? And, you know, I'm from Long Meadow. I played at Long Meadow High School. He coached me at Long Meadow. I'm like, I'm like where? Like, me Long Meadow? <laughs> he's like, no, East Long Meadow. Yeah, he's like, no, East Long Meadow. I'm like, I'm like, sure, let's do it. So um that's kind of how i first started coaching in east long meadow okay. and then i got really close with the athletic director kevin mcgee and he asked me if i wanted to help out the track team in the spring and i'm like you know yeah sure why not i'm not doing it <laughs> and i really fell in love with coaching track because you know track is definitely a team sport but it's so it is very individual based where like some kids put a lot of effort in some kids put the minimum effort in and the kids who put a lot of effort in them achieving you know maybe a, a school record or them qualifying for western mass like that is their championship and right. they celebrate it like it's their championship so i thought that was really cool uh and you're outside you get to meet a bunch of different people um and i had two great track coaches i coached matt sullivan and coach uh coach michael budd who's a girls coach and he's still a girls Holy. Coach. And they were, they were, oh yeah they were unbelievable and i learned a ton from them uh coach gorman as well who coaches the girls he they were they were all unbelievable so i love that experience then i coached volleyball the last two years in the, in the fall, girls oh. love, and I loved it. It was such a team sport, and volleyball is one of those sports where if you don't communicate, if you don't play as a team, you're not going to win because yeah. those sports rely on communication. They rely on those essential skills you need, uh, those team skills you need. So my AD calls me last summer and said, "Hey, do you want to coach cross country instead of volleyball?" And in my head, I'm like, "No way! There's no way I'm leaving volleyball. I love volleyball. It's a great sport." <laughs> right. Uh, then I thought about him more, and he, and he kind of talked to me and said how you can impact all sorts of kids, not just the athletes. You can connect with kids who, you know, may have no sport to play, and they may want to feel a part of a team. And right. that was a selling point for me. Um, basketball is a very team-oriented sport uh, where usually the best athletes play basketball, right? Baseball, football, the best athlete lacrosse, the best athletes play those sports. But cross-country gave me a tool, a, a, an opportunity and a tool to really connect with kids who aren't the best athletes and give them a chance to play a sport that you're going to do for the rest of your life. It's great for you body, right? Running is awesome. Um, and you get to meet people and connect with people. So I co I teach a lot of freshmen at, at my, at my school, at East Long Meadow. And I, I'm always in their ear. Hey, come out for cross country. You know, this year you play, you're doing cross country this year. What are you doing in the fall? Nothing. You're doing cross country, you know, stuff like that. So right. it gave me a way to further connect with kids who I thought needed it the most. And, I love cross country. Like I'm not leaving cross country. I told my AD, I'm not going back to volleyball, even though I do miss volleyball. <laughs> cross country is a great sport. Uh, you're outside, you're running. Um, the kids who run cross country are a great group of kids. Um, and once again, you start off, you have a bunch of new kids, a lot of freshmen, they come in. Some of their best friends are, are cross country kids by the end of their four years here. Like that's just, to me, that's, that's huge. That's making an impact. And, um, I love cross country. So my journey to cross country, my journey to East Long Meadow is a little unorthodox, but <laughs> I want to change it for the world. You know, right. Coach Allen called me. 
uh, years ago. Um, I don't know where I would be if, I, if he didn't call me. Um, but yeah, that's my kind of my journey to coaching East Lombardo and kind of coaching uh, track and field and, and cross country. The different sports obviously is more events in track and field, uh, but they're the same type of thing, right? Like you're highly communicating with your, with your teammates, a um, little more relaxed in basketball. You know, it's not so like this, 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 it's more laid back. Um, but it's a great chance to connect and meet people and, and continue to, you know, build strong relationships with your classmates and uh, your coaches as well. So I love those two sports. That's awesome, man. You're making me want to uh, look into like a men's track and field league. Do it. Anything. Like Anything you can do to get involved. It's the best. It's the best feeling. Most definitely. Um, Coach, do you have any advice for any students, let's say, um, as we, we had talked about before, the freshmen um, uh, that are just wanting to get into uh, track and field? And yeah. One, so one motto we had at Springfield College, and I, I'm, as you know, was, uh, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, right? Yep. Uh, and that's so big in life because no real progress can be made if you're just comfortable. Like you have to be able to be vulnerable, put yourself out there and step outside your comfort zone. Um, so, you know, I tell my kids all the time, like, listen, like, what's the worst that can happen? You don't like it and you won't do it next year. That's fine. But I haven't had one kid who, who has done cross country that hasn't liked it, that's done track and hasn't liked it because there's something for everyone. There's something for everyone. Like we don't throw all the runners in one level and say, go run 10 miles. Like we have one group that does 10 miles, one that might do five, one that might do seven, one that might, be, might, might do two, you know, so it's all, it all varies. You know what I'm saying? Like it all varies. Um, so I think just trying, giving you your best and stepping outside your comfort zone, it goes a long way. And mm -hmm. that goes a long way in life, Zeke, you know, like anything in life, relationships, you want to talk to someone, you know, like you have to be able to step outside your comfort zone and, and try something. And if you don't like it, okay, you don't like it, move on. But if you don't try it, you're not going to know if you don't like it or not. So exactly. I'm a big believer in stepping inside your comfort zone and uh, really trying to see how it goes and then reflecting on it. If you like it, do it again. If you don't like it, make adjustments, try something new, you know? So I'm a big believer in stepping inside your comfort zone and, and doing all sorts of stuff like that. Right. God, God bless you and those kids, man. And mm. when, when I heard five and seven and 10 miles, I'm like, Oh, dude. yeah. <laughs> it's 10 miles. I don't think once, I could do that at 32, but yeah, <laughs> once, once a week, maybe, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, there's different levels. It's not just like, we don't throw everyone in a marathon. It, it varies on, on levels and stuff. Right. So I think that's the biggest misconception about cross country is like, Oh, I got to run 10 miles with him or her. Like, no, you can, there's, there's different levels. I'm not going to throw you in the fire yet. You <laughs> okay. know? Slow steps. So and you just you just erased that misconception from my mind. Thank there you. There you go. Thank you very much. You're cross country next year. You're helping helping me out. Awesome. <laughs> um, what can we expect from the East Long Meadow High School athletic program? Um, that you lead going forward into a post COVID world. Yeah. So it's been you know obviously really challenging with everything going on. I give. I give all school leaders around the country credit because I don't know how they're doing it. Like I'm in grad school right now for. Uh, administration so maybe one day you know principal ad assistant awesome. principal, we'll, we'll see i don't know but it, it blows my mind how how awesome they've been like they were thrown into something that is brand new mm -hmm. has never been happened before and there's no playbook for it um we have a new principal here frank page and his first day in the job was essentially you know the summer that's first day in the job and he had to navigate a pandemic he had to navigate being a new principal and he's done unbelievable things. And I give him credit. And I don't know how he does it. Like, it, it blows my mind. Um, our athletic director, Kevin McGee, is an awesome guy as well. And, you know, I don't know how he does it either. Like, it's just, I can't imagine how to navigate this. And they've done it so well. And if there wasn't a playbook before this, they, they've written a playbook on how to do it right. And I give them <laughs> credit. Um, they've been so supportive. Um, and I think, you know, them having that mindset that it's about the kids, mm -hmm. you know, fuels everything that they do. And, They've been two great people I've looked up to. I'd love to get into now. Um, and I look forward to working with them in the years coming. Um, hopefully next year, sports will be a little more uh, post or pre-COVID yeah. sports where fans can come to the games, uh, maybe no masks. We'll see. You know, I, It's definitely not the same without fans there. Uh, but our athletes have been great with just competing, representing the Spartan across their chest, uh, representing their family to the best of their ability, and uh, giving it their all. And that's all we can ask for at the end of the day, you know. Um, my first year coaching basketball here, we were five and 15, but that was one of my best favorite teams ever. Like we, we competed every single game. There was never a game where it didn't compete. They didn't get after it. 
Uh, and they were great teammates and they were a great team throughout the course of the season. And we got better from day one to the last day of the season. And that's what the true test of our team is. This year we were A and two. We were one of the better teams in Western Mass. Uh, we finished ranked four uh, in the power rankings. Mm-hmm. It's things we had no playoffs, but um, but you know, they were the same thing. They were a great team. Um, they bought into what we were doing, they believed in each other. And they gave it their all every practice and every game. And that's all we can ask for at the end of the day. Like wins and losses are great. Championships are great. But if yeah. you just – if they give it their all, it's all you're going to ask for as a coach, and as a team, as a school. It's all you're going to ask for. So Exactly. As, 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 as long as the kids are learning, having fun. Yes. And the coaches are enjoying the experience and having fun too. That's all that matters. Yes. The dream is a journey. One of my best friends told me that quote. The dream is a journey. It's not about the journey. So it's not about the dream. It's not about the end goal. It's about the journey, how you get there. You know, like just enjoying those, enjoying that journey, you know, kind of taking it day by day, enjoying the process and good things happen no matter win or lose, like good things will always happen. So an important piece of advice for anyone in, in, in any walk of life. Yes, sir. Um, um, what is the single most important piece of advice you've given your, your uh, health students? So I think the biggest piece of advice I give, I, I've given my students, um, I've given, um, you know, any of my athletes is just to, you know, be yourself mm-hmm. and be, be kind. If you're yourself and you're a kind person, things work out. Like you don't want to be known as that person who's a jerk in high school. You don't want to be known as that person who's not approachable, who's not there for people. Like you want to be someone who is kind and who's a good person, you know? Mm-hmm. And I believe everyone's a good person. Sometimes people show it a little differently, but you have to kind of gear them and lead them to that direction. Um, one thing I wish, well, I definitely had this, but I wish I kind of utilized it more was I wish I had someone there for me telling me like, it's going to be okay. Cause high school, as you know, is tough. It's a tough time for people, right? They're going through a lot of changes physically, mentally, emotionally. And I tell my people, my kids all the time. I'm like, listen, like, it's okay. Like you're going to get through it. Like, you're going to look back in five, 10 years and be like, wow, like that was nothing, you know, like in the moment it might seem hard, but like just weather the storm, keep going, uh, and it's not as bad as it looks, you know. Like just keep on fighting because life's a fight. It's tough. That you have good days, bad days, good years, bad years. But I think when you build those good habits of being kind and being a good person, those lead to good days, which lead to good years, and ultimately will give you a good life. So um, I think that's a huge piece of advice I give my kids. It's just like listen, be kind, be friendly, be yourself. Like just be yourself because yourself is enough. You, you great, you're a great person who you are. Um, so exactly. Um, how does being the health ed teacher interact with your role as the, the coach of, of multiple sports? Yeah. So in college, spring for college, I wanted to be a phys ed teacher. Um, and my first year of teaching, I was at Smith Academy at Halffield Nass, which is like 25 minutes away from, from, uh, East Long Meadow. Okay. And I was doing half health, half PE. And I fell in love with health. Like <laughs> in PE, and I'm not saying it's all the time, but you usually connect with only the people who are trying, which are usually the athletes. You only connect with them because everyone else is not doing anything or they're just kind of like whatever. In <laughs> health, sitting on the bleachers. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to stereotype, you know, phys ed, but that's a lot of the time that's what I saw. So in health, everyone's sitting in a chair. You have the opportunity to go around and connect with people. I was telling my friend today that my favorite part of teaching is just like those little conversations like – you know, Steve's here, or Johnny's here, or Julia's there, like talking to them, being like, hey, how's your day going? Or how was your weekend? Or those little conversations that you can have in health are like huge. They're huge. And it kind of goes back to, you don't know what someone's going through. So maybe that conversation you're having, like makes someone's day, or maybe it like helps them get through a tough time. Um, so I love teaching health. Uh, it's so much team-based things, as I talked about. Like I love doing projects. I love project-based learning. I'm not, I'm not big into tests and quizzes. I'm huge into projects because you can work together. Try to solve, yeah, try to solve a real problem. And I think that's what life is, you know, because in the real world, like you're not going to be given a test. You're going to be given a project where you have to work with people uh, and figure out a solution to the problem. And I think that's so important and so transferable. Um, and I love being a teacher and coach in the same school. Some people hate it, but I love it because you can connect with them even more. Like, I believe the best athletes are the ones you connect with the most and the ones you form relationships with the most, because those, those days of, you know, the Bob Knight days of being tough without love, like you can't, you have to love first and be tough after, like you have to show them that you're there for them and you care about them in order to really be tough on them. Like if I just rip a kid out and practice without getting to know them, they're not going to respond to that. But if they know I care about them and they know that I'm there for them no matter what, and they know that I'm invested in them, 
you can do whatever you want. Like you, you can be as hard on them as you want. Um, you know, we're very demanding. Like we, we want our players to be really good. Like our players want to be really good. Um, we're not going to demean them. You know, we're not going to, you know, say this, say that, like we're going to love them and we're going to show them, listen, like we need to do a better job of this, that, like they know we're there for them at all times, no matter what we're there for them. So I think love tough should be instead of tough love, because you got to love them first before you toughen them. Uh, and I think that's kind of like the new school of coaching and the new research that's coming out. Hmm. Yeah, man, that is, that is definitely the way to go as far as coaching. I, I remember, um, I remember one of my past coaches and, and, and dude playing football, man, it was just barking all out, all from, from the start of practice till the yeah. end. And, and, uh, the kind of, you kind of built that in yourself. I was like, Oh man, I really don't want to mess up. And it's good that, 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 that your approach to coaching is the thoughtfulness and, and the caring so that then maybe a situation when a situation arises, when you have to be tough on an athlete, yeah. they're more receptive versus exactly. Exactly. And it kind of goes to Zeke with, uh, you know, like you have to love tough, but th those, those values, those morals that I talked about before, like, like the game has changed, games change, offense, defense, it changes, right. but those morals and values, accountability, like, that doesn't change. Like you can love someone and be tough, but also hold them accountable. Make sure they're working hard. Make mm -hmm. sure they're being a good teammate. Like you can do all those stuff. You don't need to holler and yell at all times. Like other right. times, sometimes where I holler and yell, of course, but at the end of the day, like they know I love them and they know it's for the greater good of the team and themselves. Um, if you just holler and yell and, and, and hold them accountable without loving them, that's not when they're going to respond. But if you love them first, you hold them accountable, you do all those things that any coach should do, no matter if you're old, new, whatever, then I think results happen that way. Um, and that's kind of been my philosophy with that is, is you know, loving them tough, um, being there for them at all times. You know, it's bigger than sports. Uh, but also like holding those values of hard work, accountability, togetherness, uh, cooperation, collaboration, like those values don't change no matter what's new, no matter what offense is new, whatever, whatever new defense is new, like that stuff doesn't change. This guy is a class act at coaching. <laughs> class act. Um, really quickly, what professional teams do you root for, if any? Uh, so I'm, a little, I'm a big LeBron James fan. LeBron's been my idol since I was in fourth grade. I remember – uh, my first game, my mom going to see him at Mohegan Sun, a preseason game. And right. I was just like idolized. I was in shock. I'm like, oh my God, it's LeBron James. Um, <laughs> so I like, I like, this sounds terrible, but I like whatever team LeBron's on. That, that's, that's not the best. Um, Lakers. I love college teams. I love the like, <laughs> basketball. Um, I like the Celtics. I like the Reds. I like the New England teams. Mm. Um, but I would say I'm more about like the individual. Well, here's a team guy talking about an individual player. Um, <laughs> right. you know, I love LeBron. Uh, I love Coach K. Um, I love, you know, I, I don't hate an athlete. There's not one athlete I don't like. Um, right. I'm, I'm just a big fan of sports in general. Like, okay. a lot of, there's a lot of good athletes out there, a lot of good coaches out there. Like, I just love watching them play and, and, and coach and, and do all that good stuff they're doing. Awesome. Last but not least, your legacy is already epic. Um, do you see yourself coaching at EEL, at, at East Long Meadow um, High School for the rest of your career? Yeah, so if I have a choice, I don't want to leave. Um, you know, I love East Long Meadow. I love the community. Um, there's great people here. Uh, they're doing a lot of really good things here. Uh, they're forward thinkers. Our school leaders are forward thinkers. Uh, mm -hmm. They see the world. They know um, what needs to get better. You know, they know all the challenges kids are faced with, and they want to build – you know, action around those, those, those challenges. Um, and, and for me as a, you know, employee, I want, I want that exactly. I want people who are forward thinkers. I want to work for people who are all about the kids. And that's what I have from the top down. And I wouldn't want to change where I am for the world. Um, who knows what the future holds, but I, all I know is I love coaching high school sports. I love teaching in high school. I love East Long Meadow. Um, so I don't plan on going anywhere, Zeke. Uh, awesome. Unless I'm, unless I have no choice, but I love being here and, and it, this, this place has been unbelievable to me. Um, it's made a great impact on my life and, and I just love being a part of this community and the Western Mass community. And I appreciate all the things you, you know you do and all the other people covering sports too because you guys are great. The kids love it and the kids need it. I mean, this year has been brutal for the kids. I can't imagine being in high school and, and having to be home learning. You know, learning was hard for me already, but learning at home, not socializing, I can't imagine how I, I would do it. So I give... You guys credit, I get the kids credit, and I appreciate all the things that you guys do for our kids, so thank you.
Thank, thank you very much. Uh, personally, for me, the, the driving factor behind it is um, my, my senior graduation um, in back, we'll turn the clock back in um, 2007. It was, it was one of, it was one of the, the biggest moments of my life. And last year in 2020, when, you know, a good, a good amount of schools didn't do graduations because of COVID that, that truly broke my heart. And it, it was what motivated me to do this um, and to put emphasis on the local student athletes um, to, I guess, sort of to like make up for that. And um, yeah, like I said, that really affected me. I didn't, it, it hurt to see all those seniors to, to go through the summer without a graduation and yeah. being left in limbo. So yeah. that was always, always my motivation behind yeah. uh, yeah, my, my youngest brother is a senior at St. Lawrence of New York, and he's been a great lacrosse player the last, you know, 12 years of his life. He won the Western Mass Player of the Year like in 2017 it was. Like, he's a great athlete. Uh, he's a great teammate. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, his junior mm -hmm. was taken away from him, and what? his senior year uh, because of everything going on. And I give him a ton of credit as well. Like, he's been someone who I've talked to a lot about it. Like, how do you, how are you doing? And he has such a good mindset. He's like, listen, there's a lot bigger problems going on in the world right now. And he is such a forward thinker as well. Um, he is a great leader and he just, he gets it. And I think it's tough for a lot of kids. Uh, but I think for the majority of them are understanding, like, listen, a lot of things are bigger going on right now than sports. Uh, but it's time to get back, I think. You know, I totally agree. Like, it's time to get back. Uh, but it all goes back to, I give the kids credit. Like I, I give them a ton of credit, our brother credit. I give all the people playing sports credit right now or trying to play sports. Awesome. So. Well, thank 413 sports talk. would like to Frank Brendan Abad for coming on the show today. Um, I, I really appreciated the conversation and, um, do drop by again if you ever get the chance. Yeah, Zeke, I, whenever you want me, whenever you want me, I'd love to come by. You, you've been awesome, and I appreciate you you having me on your show. You're doing great things, so keep up the good work. Um, and I'm a fan. I follow your show. I watch your show. So keep up the good work. I'm here whenever you want. So let me know. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Coach. That, that, that really made my day.